Hey my friends, Coach Tom here. We are on lesson two of our beginner backhand ground stroke series. We're back here at three quarter court. Okay, it's about 60 feet from me to my opponent and we're gonna work on the next level of this beginner backhand. Okay, so we're backing up a little bit. Remember, if you guys haven't watched the first series of this, the first lesson in this series, please do so. It'll give you some tips, some thoughts, um, and some information about kind of where we go and what I think about backhands and ground strokes in general, and give you kind of a building block, a, a foundation for what we're gonna do here in lesson number two. What we're covering today is a linear versus an angular swing, okay? And it's important because what ends up happening is we, we slap at the ball and we reduce our contact zone with that kind of angular swing. And by having a more linear swing, we can get a longer contact zone, a bigger contact zone, and have better results, even if our timing is a little bit off. And remember you guys, with the videos that we do here, the, the videos that I do here, what I'm trying to do is give you guys the tools so that you can go out on the court and practice this stuff on your own, right? I almost want to teach you guys how to teach yourself. You can't always have me or another pro or somebody on the court with you, right? You guys can't just be constantly taking lessons. It's, it's the whole point is to get out there and play and practice. And if we can give you, if I can give you the tools to kind of adjust and, and tinker and correct certain mistakes and certain errors or to recognize the things that you're doing well while you're on the court by yourself, that's pretty cool. Okay, so as with everything out here, you guys, move your feet. It's hugely important. Good footwork equals good position. Good position equals good balance. Good balance and position equals a good shot. So make sure that you guys are moving your feet to the ball. As your level progresses, as we back up from lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, and we keep going, that footwork is gonna get more and more intense, right? You're gonna have to have a little bit quicker for a step, which means a little bit more active ready position. Um, you're going to have to move a little bit sooner, which means being able to read what's going on on the other court or the other side of the court. You're going to have to react, um, which means also you're going to have to recover, which we'll cover in lesson three. You're going to have to recover a little bit more quickly after your shots. So there's a lot of pieces and they all, almost all, come down to moving your feet. Okay, so let's just quickly look at the swing, right? So if I'm here, this was what we talked about in level one. That's a very basic, simple swing. One, two. All I'm gonna do here is make that a little bit bigger, right? So if I'm one, two, right? Backwards, forwards, backswing, follow through. If that was my swing in lesson one, all I'm gonna do is go, instead of here, I'm gonna go to here, right? And notice, I don't just flip my hands back, right? I turn my shoulders, I turn my core, right? So level one, lesson one, lesson two, if this is my follow through in lesson one, that's my follow through in lesson two, right? It's just getting a little bit bigger, okay? So let's take a look at that lesson one. Very small, very basic, okay? And honestly, if you guys are back here on the, the three quarter court line, that shot probably shouldn't go in because you're a little bit further back and you're not hitting it hard enough or high enough. Here's the lesson two. So I'm just speeding up that swing a little bit and I'm opening my strings a little bit more to get a little bit more height on that ball, okay? You'll also notice that my footwork, my movement, right? My step or weight transfer actually increases. So if I'm on level one, lesson one, I'm not moving a ton. Lesson two, I might be moving a little bit more with a weight transfer, okay? That's that turn step swing beat, bit, right? So if we talk about turn step swing, that step and the turn and the swing, they're all gonna get a little bit bigger with each progression in this series of lessons. When we started this, I talked about linear versus angular swings. And what happens is when we swing, when we kind of get out here and we just reach for the ball, right? If I just reach out, you guys can see that it's, I, I'm very likely to just kind of slap my left hand around there, right? What happens with that is that my racket moves in an angular fashion, right? It moves almost in a circle, semicircle. Right? And what I want, so, so that reduces my, my contact zone. And you guys will do a, demo, a diagram of this. I'll show you kind of what we're talking about. But what I want is a more linear swing, right? And I've got to do that by turning, right? So you can see the difference between this swing where my racket is moving in a straight line versus this swing 
where my racket is actually kind of swinging across my body, right? So that's probably the biggest thing at this level. We've, we've been on lesson one, we've done lesson one, we figured out kind of how to hit the ball. We can do that from here, but suddenly because we're magnifying our, our swing, our turn, our step, and, and the pace that we hit the ball with, because we're magnifying those things, our errors can get magnified, and that linear versus angular swing can really help clean up some of those errors. One really kind of good way to think about this is almost using your back arm, your left arm, almost using it like a piston, I guess. Um, maybe that's not the best analogy, but it's the one I've got for today. But the idea is I want to, if you see my, my left arm is kind of bent right here, right? I'm back here, left arm bent, and then I just straighten it out, right? And what that does is it keeps my racket moving forwards. Again, I'm not straight-armed coming around. I'm not bent-armed coming around. I'm bent straight, bent straight. And as we get bigger, you know, as the swing gets bigger, this part will stay the same. The only difference is that we'll swing out, reach, and follow through. That'll be many lessons down the road, but for now, again, try to use that left arm to create some linear motion in your swing. All right, you guys, so what we're talking about here is this linear versus angular swing, right? The idea of the, the kind of stepping out this slappy swing, that's your more angular swing versus turning and actually stepping through and making a more linear swing. And what it looks like, right, when you slap at the ball, we're hitting this way, by the way, okay? So when you slap at the ball, you get this big arcing kind of angular swing, right? Versus when you actually step in, okay? So you can see there's a pretty distinct difference between those two swing paths, right? So you're in the first one, your racket's moving nice and straight. Sorry, the first one was the linear, the angular one, okay? But we're moving that kind of angular swing path versus this linear one. And what ends up happening is that if you look at where the, the swing path is actually going straight, where the ball might go into the court, that's about it on that kind of angular swing, right? That real slappy swing. So anything that you hit outside of that area is probably going to go wide left or right, okay? So you're reducing your contact zone. But if you look at this one, look at how long, I mean, it's, it's a much bigger contact zone, right? That racket is moving straight in a much longer line for a much longer period of time. And so you're getting a much better result, and much more consistency with that nice linear swing. All right, so that's the basic gist on that, you guys. We are further back in the court, so you're gonna need to add some height to that ball. I don't want you guys to worry about power. Don't try to hit it harder. Hitting it harder means less consistent, okay? That's a general rule out here. So try to hit it a little bit higher, and the way you're gonna do that is just adjust your string position, right? Tinker with that string position, tinker with the swing path, which basically is where the swing starts and where the swing finishes, right? So if I've got a low start and a high finish versus a kind of medium start and a medium finish, right? You can see that there's a ramp there, right? And that's gonna affect how high the ball goes or how low the ball goes. And then you add into that your string position, okay? But for now, make sure that you guys are just tinkering with it, right? See what works. Remember when you change your grip, right? You're actually, your hand stays in the same spot. You move the racket. We're not just flipping our hand around. That's not gonna do us any good, right? So if I've gotta change my grip on the backhand, actually change the grip. Don't, don't just, right? You're not gonna be able to swing like that. That, that you got to get your hand comfortable make your swing so that's lesson two you guys bunch of stuff to take in make sure you guys practice this watch the video a couple of times if you need to and definitely remember i'm i'm here to help you guys i'm your teaching pro now so you guys let me know what works what doesn't work what questions you have what things are good bad or indifferent or whatever but let me know so that we can work on this stuff together okay i love you guys i appreciate you coming out and watching today and i'll see you on the next one